Okay, so that just happened. Man, there was a lot in this episode. Hey everyone, Templar74 here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and today's Yu-Gi-Oh! video is going to be my review of the latest episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 32, The Lady Who Loved Machine Calvary. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this episode was a very deceptive episode. Going into it, I wasn't expecting a lot out of this episode, and this episode was basically just like, hold my beer. Because we come in and this episode just dumped everything on us at once. And it was a lot to digest. I actually had to watch this episode a couple of times just to fully get the picture of what just happened. Because I watched the episode once. I'm like, wait a minute. What just happened? Watched it again. I'm like, what just happened? So this episode took a total of three watches for me. And I love it when Yu-Gi-Oh! does that because deep episodes like this are hard to come by. And it's very difficult to pull them off. Especially in a way where you're like, wait a minute. I need to rewatch that just to see if that actually happened. And when Yu-Gi-Oh! does it, they usually get high marks, and this episode is no exception. But we'll talk about all that soon enough. So at risk of further rambling, though, let's move on to the actual episode. So the episode begins with an introduction to a character we met, oh, what was it now? Three or four episodes back. May have been more, may have been less. Don't quote me on that. And that is Asuna. And she's the girl that Yuga met at the dual training camp, the Rush dual training camp. And we learn a little bit more about her. We learn that she is the daughter of Mitsuba Heavy Machinery, who built the city, contributed to Goha Corporation, the dual discs, the dueling, you know. So basically, she's a big deal. She's a headshot. Um, and Mitsuba is basically a pun for Mitsubishi. I'm not I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's basically what it is here. In fact, I had a hard time recording this review and not saying Mitsubishi, saying Mutsuba. But anyway, I digress on that. Anyway, so Asuna, we learn that she's a big deal in the city. We learn that she's also the president of the Machine Calvary Duel Club. And yeah, we learn that she's a big deal despite only being a sixth grader, which Roman promptly points out. They're like, really? She's just a sixth grader. However, she does end up accepting Yuga's terms to a duel. And contrary to what she did the last time where she said, I can't, she does this time. And she basically is insulted at Yuga. She's like, basically, you're just modifying dueling, Goha dueling, and I don't like it. I will never accept it. But she's going to go ahead and go through with the duel. And basically, the terms are, if Yuga loses, him and his entire gang have to transfer to Goha 6th Elementary. And if she loses, she'll transfer to Goha 7th. Um, I'm not quite sure it works that way, but, I mean, heck, it's Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's an anime, it's not exactly supposed to make sense. But anyway, Yuga agrees to the terms, and the duel gets underway here right after the opening. And I gotta switch to the opening real quick, because we did get some updated visuals in the opening. Same song, updated visuals, and I do like the updated visuals, I really do like them. Uh, they just added some flair to this episode, in my opinion. Okay, so now we're moving on to the actual duel. And we see that Asuna uses her excavator as her dual disc. And we see that she uses worms. She brings out an excavator dragon worm. And basically, uh, Gakuto's like, she uses dragons just like Luke. And Luke's like, no, they're worms. And Roman asks, well, what's the difference? He's like, no idea. Uh, let me uh, short summary this. Worms are different from dragons. Uh, pretty much in every platform because worms also have abilities. There are different classification of dragons. Some of them aren't flesh and blood dragons. Some of them are dragon hybrids. Basically, worms are anything that doesn't fit in the... Uh, you picture a dragon like the classical fairy tale dragon. Anything that really doesn't fit in that particular category isn't really classified as a dragon. It's complicated, but that's the Reader's Digest version. And it's pretty much the same in Yu-Gi-Oh! as it is in Magic. Worms are stronger than dragons, and they're just more of a uh, threat than they are anything. So anyway, she uses worms, and they do some pretty impressive things to Yuga. He's on the back foot, and Yuga is able to basically try to pull his butt out of the fire by bringing out a new ace monster, the Brave of Twilight Light Across, and he uses its effect to special summon Seven's Road Witch, which of course uses its special effect to bring out Seven Road's Magician, and we're thinking, okay, 
Yuga has arguably his three best monsters out here. He's wiped out all of Asuna's monsters, and he's moving in for a direct attack. He's going to win the duel. How, and it's funny because we see that there's like 10 minutes left of the episode at this point. So that's where you're basically thinking because Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s usually saves the last 10 minutes of the episode for basically the slice of life time after the duel, right? So you're thinking, okay, Yuga's going to win, and that's really what I thought. However, Asuna manages to hang on, and she does something that I was like, okay, so that just happened. Asuna Maximum Summons, and she brings out Worm Excavator Heavy Mesquari... Mex... Oh, I cannot talk. Worm Excavator Heavy Mequestrian Worm. And I know I'm probably butchering that name, but as you can tell, it's a very hard name to pronounce. But anyway, my poor pronunciation aside, this Maximum Monster is a beast. And it comes out... It is the size of... It's the size of a town. And basically, Yuga's like, oh, crud, this is going to steamroll him. And Gakuto and company are like, wait a minute. We thought the Maximum Summon didn't exist anymore outside of Neil's cards. Well, apparently it does, and apparently Asuna has it. You know, when you're rich, it's basically, screw the rules, I have money. It's one of those Kaiba things. I mean, we all see that coming in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Asuna uses this Maximum Monster to steamroll Yuga. Yuga loses, and as promised... Him and company have to transfer to Goha 6th Elementary because he lost the duel. Much to the chagrin of everybody, everybody's upset by this, that this is going to have to happen. And then we get the final part of the episode, the um, slice of life, bread and butter, if you will, of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. And that is back with Mimi. Now, if you remember, again, this has been several episodes ago, we left Mimi. She was at the door of the Goha president's office. She saw the Goha president with the back turned. Well, apparently she opens the office door, and the guy that's the Goha president is out on the ground. Um, I don't know if he's dead. I think we're probably going to assume that he's dead because he's lifeless and old. But uh, basically, she's like, so this is the Goha president. And about that time, his helmet headpiece, the Darth Vader headpiece floats up. And it's like, no, I'm the president drone. And the president drone just assists the person acting as Goha president. And he ba this drone basically presents Mimi an offer to make her Goha president the president of Goha Corporation, which he's like, what? But yeah, the drone drops itself on Mimi's head, and now she is the hotshot of Goha Corporation. And when the serv servient of the Goha president comes in and says that Oda Yuga has transferred to the 6th elementary just as they planned, Mimi's in shock by this. But she ultimately throws her act together because she's like, okay, I'm the president now. She's like, okay, very good. So we learned that this whole thing from Asuna was basically a setup. So yeah, this is all part of Goha's overarching plan for Yuga here, which is surprising, it's convoluted, and it's deep. I love that. But yeah, that's essentially the episode. Like I said, there was a lot in this episode. This was one of those rare episodes where you have to rewatch it a few different times to be like, okay, did that actually just happen? I think the last time I did that, in all honesty, was back in Vrains with Playmaker and I Duel, and then again in Vrains with Bowman and uh, Playmaker's Duel. So I've only done that maybe once or twice per Yu-Gi-Oh! series. So the fact that we were able to do this in sevens, that's a big deal, at least to me. And that makes the episode all the better, in my opinion. Uh, overall, I give this episode a 9 out of 10. Like I said, there was a lot in this episode. Uh, this episode kind of hit it out of the park, cramming all that into one episode. And the updated opening was just slicing on the cake, in my opinion. Or icing on the cake. Yeah, icing on the cake. I cannot talk this morning. But uh, yeah, with all that said, everybody, those are my thoughts on the episode. And as always, in the comments, I want to hear yours. What were your thoughts on the episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just eh there? What are your thoughts? Just let me know in the comments section down below. Because as always, I enjoy hearing from you. All right, everyone, as always, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.
Hey everyone, Templar74 here. Did you enjoy the video? Do you want to help support me in making more content like this and see your name here at the end of every video? Then consider supporting me on Patreon. Any help is greatly appreciated and will help ensure continuation and increase the quality of production of the videos that I am able to make for all of you. Link down below. Again, thank you so much for your support and for liking and subscribing. You all are amazing. And as always everyone, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day everybody and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye everybody.